Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. So, welcome to our first Dark Crystal Age of Resistance stream. So, this is basically our way of going the next level of reviewing the thing that Rocky's been wanting us to review more than anything else on the channel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, basically, for the next 10 weeks, we're going to be looking at each individual episode on a Sunday, just kind of talking about how we felt about it, explaining what we liked about it, and riffing on some bits that we found funny. Mm -hmm. So... But before we carry on introductions, obviously, you know me, I'm George, and I'm in charge of the channel of the writing and editing and such. Hi, I am Rocky. I do anything he tells me to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that does, that does not sound like a nice way of putting it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> on the creative Make... side of things. Yes. Yes. Production assistant, let's say. Yes. You're also the voice of Huck, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm Enchanted Essays. I do the um, uh, the Psychoville live stream series with George, um, uh, which is over on my channels. And uh, I'm occasionally active in a Discord server and that kind of thing. So, oh, and uh, and I've appeared in um, uh, two of George's uh, reviews as well. The um, the Tommy one and the was it mongrels? Mong it was mongrels. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so we're going to be looking at the very first episode of Dark Crystal. So before we go on, we'll just sort of give a brief uh, explanation of this. So basically, for those who aren't aware, Dark Crystal was a movie that was made in 1982, if I remember correctly. Yes. By the Jim Henson Company. So it was Jim Henson's attempt to make something more mature compared to what he'd normally been doing, which was, of course, The Muppets. And so this was a really in-depth fantasy movie that didn't have any humans in it at all. They were all puppets. Mm -hmm. And while it did do quite well financially, because it was a very kind of esoteric and very weird sort of movie, it didn't catch on with the public quite as much. So it became a bit of a cult film, but there had always been demand to continue it because it, it gained quite a powerful fan base. So uh, when did the show come out? I should have done my research on this. <laughs> 2019, I think. Was it yeah. 2019, really? Well, I thought it was a bit further back than that. August 30th, 2019, to be exact. Okay. We but had yeah, a pandemic so... in between, so it feels like more, more time. <laughs> uh, that's true, yes. Before times. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, so basically uh, Netflix uh, basically had this show, and this was also uh, partially made by Brian Henson, who's Jim Henson's son, and Brian Froud, who was the... Uh, creative director of both this and Jim Henson's Labyrinth. Actually, no, this one had more uh, Lisa Henson involved. Oh, Brian. Lisa Henson. Okay, I didn't know mm -hmm. that. Yep. But yeah, so it was made by people who had always been a part of the Henson family, but they didn't really get as much of the limelight. So yeah, this is actually a prequel to the events of the first movie. So to briefly sum up the first movie, as I said in my review, it's effectively the plot of Star Wars A New Hope, but with fantasy and puppets. Hmm. So it's basically an uh, orphan kid finds out that he's the chosen one and has to go and fight the evil empire, finds some people along the way to help him, and ends up defeating them. That's essentially the most basic way I can sum up the plot. Yeah. Well, yeah, but we're Bit of Lord of the Rings as well in a that. little bit of Lord of the Rings, but to be he fair, has Lord... a, he has a thing he has to bring with him. Yes, but at the same time, Star Wars also took a lot of influence from Lord of the Rings, so it fits. Mm. But this is actually a prequel. So in the first movie, the villains. Yeah, are... it... oh, yeah you go ahead. I was, I was saying it's a very generic hero's journey, isn't it? It is, yes. So, but in the first movie, it's established that the way the villains work is that at the end, it's revealed that the villains and the creatures known as the mystics, who are the creatures who raise the main character, were actually originally part of the same species, but they got split into two when they damaged the titular Dark Crystal. And basically, the prequel goes into the bad guys known as the Skeksis. Oh, <laughs> my microphone keeps falling down. Hope that didn't oh, no. sound too bad. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the Skeksis, who are the bad guys, they show basically how they ruled over the uh, main character species known as the Gelflings uh, before basically the main character is one of the last few ones who is still alive. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 
So uh, what about you guys? What sort of experience did you have with the Dark Crystal movie before the TV series? Well, I personally only saw the movie, like, the same week that this came out, because one of my friends uh, was really excited about this TV series, and he kept showing me clips of the movie, and I thought, oh, this actually looks pretty cool, I should check it out, and I just loved the movie, so as soon as I was done, I was watching Evangelion at the time, so as soon as I finished the last movie of that, I immediately popped this on, and the rest was history. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I uh, I grew up with the film. I think I was about 12 years old when my mum bought the DVD, and she'd seen it in the 80s. And um, I I just remember it really vividly, just like the, the atmosphere of the film. And every, every time I watch the film, like at the beginning, when the introduction starts, it's just feeling like, ooh. <laughs> and um, uh, so, yeah, it... Um, so yeah, I really uh, enjoyed the film. I've um, I always thought it was better than Labyrinth because I, th I I think I saw Labyrinth for the first time after that. So I would have been I would have been at at least twelve, but more like thirteen or something. I think which like I do I do love Labyrinth, but it is it is like very thin story, which I don't it's like I don't think that's a problem. But at the same time, that means there's not much to it. But but yeah, I've, I've always considered, despite the, the quite basic story and not being quite as as fun, I've always considered you know Dark Crystal to be. I mean, it does it does feel unfair to compare them in a sense. But I've always it, do, it does feel really a special. tad unfair to compare them, yeah. But at the same time, mm -hmm. it's kind of unavoidable to compare them. It's like I think I prefer Labyrinth more just because it's the more fun movie yeah but at the same time i do feel like dark crystal definitely has better atmosphere it has better mm. world building and it just has a better feel of epicness behind it yeah labyrinth it, labyrinth's mostly really good because it feels like a really fun kind of kids movie yeah labyrinth i'd say works better as a fairy tale whereas the dark crystal works better as like a played straight high fantasy yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree uh, so, on that. Um, so I was, and I was so really excited when this was announced. Um, I uh, just put it out on Twitter. Um, I remember tearing up when the teaser trailer came out. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, it just felt like really special. And, you know, I know a lot of people are thinking like, oh, it's it's just, you know, pandering to fans of this thing. And, but, you know, it... it Obviously, it's stuff that you recognise. It's the creatures and things that you recognise. But there was so much thing, so many things that were new in that trailer and in mm. in the in the series. There's there's so much that they build on and you know create. It feels like a, such so much of a richer world. Um, and um, so yeah, I um, uh, I remember reading the um, the comics. Uh, there's a uh, a sequel that the, I think there was the co-writer of the original Dark Crystal had written. Yes, yeah, so the I mean, comic. Was, was, yeah, the, the comic was an adaptation of a planned script for a potential Dark Crystal two that never came to fruition. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, um, uh, so yeah, I, I read that, and that is good, but it definitely feels um, it does it doesn't do what the series does. It doesn't sort of expand on it and create this deeper world and. No, it does feel... Go into the sort of political stuff that... Um, uh, I mean, I, I'd, I'd describe Age... To compare Age of Resistance to something like Star Wars The Clone Wars or um, or Avatar The Last Airbender. Yeah, it, it, has kind, this... it, it kind of is. Yeah, it yeah. is. I was I will... telling George while we were watching it that this show was written in 2016 and it shows. It, yeah, it does. It really <laughs> does. I will say, so just a brief history on my experience with the Dark Crystal movie. I literally did not watch any of it until we did the review of it back in 2022. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's really my only experience with the movie. And I enjoyed the movie, but it did feel like it felt a little bit hollow. It just seemed mm -hmm. like, like I said, a very typical hero's journey story, but it didn't have that much substance to it, with the exception yeah. of some things, and particularly was the villains. I loved the villains in the first movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I will say I think it was a really good job to give the 
more expansion to the villains in the show, but also more expansion to the heroes. But uh, just to say the first thing that I really love about this, and I'll play some of it in the some of this this in the background to show my point. This whole show is absolutely fucking beautiful. Mm. It just looks so amazing. It's just got this really unique look to it where even though you can tell it's not real, it's so creatively done that you don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I remember hearing somewhere like CGI ages, but an amazing puppet will always be an amazing puppet. Absolutely. And this definitely shows that. And I have to admit that the integration between the CGI and the puppets is really impressive. Like they don't look too contrasting. They look like they blend together really, really well. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, the problem is with CGI is that when you rely on it, um, well, f obviously there's the issue of people um, in the industry doing CGI don't have now there's they don't have the uh, sufficient time and they're not paid and paid enough and all that so um, yeah. they end up having to do a rush job but um but i think the other thing is is that um you get more used to um uh you 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 get used to cgi whereas it, where it has multiple effects it ages so much better even if even if the cg in films from 10 even uh, 20 or 30 years ago because a lot of people say this about uh, the original Jurassic Park which I somehow haven't seen I've only seen the third one for some reason oh, um, all ones but... to see, oh, no. that's the one you see <laughs> yes my mum bought it by Alan. mistake <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but, yeah so with those things where they use um, those other effects the, the, the CGI isn't worse now but the fact that it used other things meant that obviously enough time went into the CG and also that um, your eyes don't have time to adjust on the CGI, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm. I mean, oh, hang on, I'll just go back a little bit. So like this part here, actually, where um, the female Gelfling shows up and she's flying, you can tell that it was done with a little bit of green screen and CGI. But mm. again, it looks so good in its own way that you don't really care yeah mm -hmm. and and you know because this is a tv series as well oh yeah so it gets a bit so, of leeway obviously because yeah. it is a tv series but even then it's still one of the most visually impressive tv series i've ever seen i could totally see this working as a film yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I'm seeing a comment there saying, I haven't seen the, uh, from Cozy Reading saying, I haven't seen the TV series yet. I'm a little nervous as I like the movie. Yeah, I, I, I posted, I, I put that up earlier. And yeah, I would say, yeah. you go ahead first. Yeah, I, was, I, I think definitely check it out because I think, I don't, it doesn't do anything that would disappoint you if you were a fan of the um, original film, I don't think. Um, no, maybe it's I, just, little... it doesn't step on the movie's toes at all. No, no, yeah. at, at least just from my point of view, I've only seen one episode so far. I'm literally watching these for the first time just before the stream starts, which, mm -hmm. as the guy who's hosting the streams, is a bit weird, but I thought it would make it a bit more organic and interesting. Whereas but, I've probably seen this like 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt it. But um, yeah, just speaking from a person who was just kind of okay in terms of my liking of the first movie, the first episode of this is really, really good. I, I will admit that like, I haven't been following the plot or characters as much as I probably should, but that's because I'm half watching, half making comments about it with who I'm watching it with. Mm -hmm. Which will make it probably more fun as we go along, where you guys have to prompt me on who's who and what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, so far I'm really enjoying it. Good. That's so good. So, something I also well, this would be a long ten weeks if you didn't like it. <laughs> oh, it would be, but I had a feeling I was going to like it just because I had the feeling it was going to be a show that took the elements of the first movie that I liked. And not only made those better, but it filled in the gaps of where I felt it was lacking. And so far, it does seem to be doing that. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember. I remember telling you when, um, uh, after seeing your uh, review of the original Dark Crystal, I was just like, "The series literally fixes the issues that you're talking about." Yeah, yeah. I got I got a lot of comments saying that, and so far, that does seem to be ringing true. Mm -hmm. There is also one thing I wanted to mention, uh, which was with the puppetry, because. 
as somebody who's done a little bit of puppetry, even for my show, in fact, I've actually got Huck's hand puppet right here, so I can show exactly what I'm talking about. So, mm -hmm. dee, 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 dee. so it's, puppetry is one of those things that it's almost kind of like you're entering another state of mind and doing motions that you wouldn't normally do. So, like, one thing I like to do with puppets is this expression. So, mm -hmm. like, it's the making it look sad and upset. When I'm doing that to demonstrate with my other hand, what I'm doing is this. Yeah. And, and that's not a hand motion you would ever do casually. But when I'm doing it as a puppet, it doesn't feel unnatural at all. It feels like it's something I should be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and no, I, the, the making of documentary for this is fascinating because uh, they, they literally kind of go over this, how emoting with the puppet and yeah. making the movement look natural is like a whole thing. I mean, I don't doubt, obviously, the way these puppets are working is not the same as just sticking my hand up a piece of felt and just because literally the head is three fingers, my middle finger, my forefinger and my ring finger. And the uh, the left ha hand is my thumb and the right hand is my pinky finger. Oh, yeah. No. You, and you're definitely not using a CGI augmentation and animatronics. <laughs> no, the most Control. augmentation, the most augmentation I've done to Huck is <laughs> duct taping some glasses onto him to make him look like Elton John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Elton John. <laughs> yes, that's a good, very good segue. Yeah. So, yeah, there this he is. Got a, yeah, this series, as we were watching along, we were kind of doing a, uh, oh, do you know who that is? Do you know who this is? Yeah, because obviously I know some of the people who are in this, but it's a matter of trying to recognize their voices, which for some it was quite easy, but for others it was very difficult. So mm -hmm. actually maybe that's a game we could play with the chat, is that uh, we'll play some of the dialogue and we'll see if any of them can guess who is who. Yeah. So this guy here on the left, uh, let's see if anybody can guess who Rian. voices him. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's his name? Sorry, the Rian. character's name, Rian. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yes, which is spelt Ryan, but yeah. Who has spent his whole life in the castle, a gelfling who respects tradition. That's why I chose Tolly. <sighs> Tolly, really? Hmm. <sighs> but I'm ready. It's a job for a soldier. So can anybody guess who that is? It's a bit tricky to tell because the guy who plays him is good at disguising his voice, but is anybody in the chat can mm -hmm. tell who plays him? So just getting some comments. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, they're still laughing over Ryan in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yep. so one oh. person got yeah, one person got it right. It is. It's Taron Egerton, the guy who played Elton John in Rocket Man. He also played Eddie the Eagle. Um, Eggsy in, in Kingsman is probably his yeah, most famous role. Indeed. He also was the guy who played the main character in the Tetris movie last year. Mm -hmm. even, though even though personally, just based on the trailer, it seemed more like a role that they wanted to have Leonardo DiCaprio play, but he wasn't available. Yeah. Uh, but, you you were almost right there, Hutchinsonian, with the spelling. There isn't a D in it. Yeah, yeah. It's Egerton, as in egg. There's no D in it. Yeah. But yeah, so he basically, he's effectively the main character, with the exception of Deet, who we'll get to later. But yeah, he's basically the main character of the show. And and Brea, I'd say. And, yeah. And Brea, yes. Yeah, the, the, in, in the series, they're, they're pretty much all sort of, they pretty much all get equal time, really. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of a uh, an Avatar The Last Airbender situation where there are kind of three main characters. Yeah. yeah, but uh, so the next group, uh, the next two, I want to uh, see if anyone can guess their voices are the two Skeksis that we see the most frequently. If I can mm -hmm. remember which part, uh, I think I've gone. I think uh, there, yeah. there we go. So these two here, uh, so the one on the left there in the red cloak, he's actually the main Skeksis we saw in the first movie, which I can never remember if it's Chamberlain or Chaplin. Chamberlain. 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 Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, he's uh, he was the main Skeksis we saw in the first movie. So it's good to see him back. But both him and the guy on the right are voiced by different voice actors than in the movie, both of which are very recognizable. So let's see if we can guess who they are. 
Oh, someone's already got him. <laughs> yeah, two, pe two people have already gotten it, but yes. Are these yeah. people have already seen the show by any chance? <laughs> uh, Hutch and Sonia definitely has, because she's from the uh, from the server yeah. that I frequent. But yeah, let, let's listen to the voices to see if anybody who hasn't seen it can guess. I failed again. You need a walk. Come, we walk. You and I. So anybody who hasn't checked the chat <laughs> can guess who is voicing them. Hmm. So uh, let's see. Anybody new wants to say who voices them? Uh, give, 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 give it. Need Hog and Hutchinsonian got it already, but just see if there's anybody else who can guess. Yeah, I don't think anyone else is going to guess. No. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, the Chamberlain, the one in the red, is voiced by Simon Pegg, and the other guy who is known as the scientist is voiced by Mark Hamill. Mm-hmm. He sounds so, like uh, the Joker with a head cold, so... He does, mm. yeah. But at the same time, I said it was too ironic to you, Rocky, how he was also the voice of Buzz Buzzard in the Fox revival of... Woody Woodpecker. Yeah. So it's all, this is the second time in his career he's voiced a, a bird of prey with a really scabby voice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, th I think it's it's really amazing because obviously I can't remember the, the scientist is the character in the original one and I can't um, and from what I can remember this voice sounds fine but the Chamberlain's voice is so iconic. It is probably the most iconic voice of the whole film. It is. Um, I mean, Orgo is probably second, but yeah. Simon Pegg, you know, being the king of the nerds that he is, has managed to get the voice perfectly. So, in the make, I don't know if you've seen the making of documentary of this, but they do a lot of um, interviews with some of the cast members, including yeah, uh, I remember. mostly mostly Simon Pegg, um, and he was saying how he saw this the original movie when it came out back in 1982 or so and uh i i am willing to put money down that he would do chamberlain impressions as a kid hmm. yeah what what little boy wouldn't be going around going hmm? yeah <laughs> the, 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 cha the chamberlain's hmm, that's probably the most famous thing of the whole movie mm -hmm. and he and we don't have to wait long for the show for him to do it because he does it right at the beginning yeah Mm. But yeah, Simon Pegg does an amazing job. I mean, I think the Chamberlain from the movie, his voice was a tiny little bit more scratchy. Yeah. But even so, Simon Pegg still does a really good job with his voice. Well, and that kind of makes sense because he's a little bit, the character's a little bit younger here. Yeah. Like, you'll it, notice the Skeksis don't really look as shabby as they did. in the, Exactly, yeah. Probably because they've got Gelfling taking care of them right now. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which we should explain. So basically the plot of this episode. Stop falling, microphone. <laughs> but uh, basically the plot of the episode. So like I said, in the movie, it was established that there were only like two Gelfling left. In this one, they still have, they still thrive as a race, but they're basically lorded over by the Skeksis as their masterminds, basically. Mm -hmm. So they, they have to do everything for the Skeksis. They have to pay tribute and tithe towards them. And yeah, they're, they're not quite slaves, but they're definitely, it's more sort of like how samurais were very oppressive to the peasants of Japan in the feudal age. Yeah. Hmm. And it's just so, feudalism in general, really, isn't it? It basically is, yeah. So mm -hmm. this is basically the beginning of where there's about to be an underground resistance movement, hence the title of the show, about to brew up amongst the Gelflings to try and overthrow the Skeksis. Yeah, basically. But uh, the Skeksis, so there's something that they're doing that's a continuation of the plot from the movie, well, more like a, a prequel, obviously. So one of the things they wanted to do in the movie was use the Dark Crystal here, which is the source of the Skeksis' powers, as a means to drain the essence from other life forms to make them younger and stronger, which we do see. And anybody who's seen the first movie knows that that moment is one of the most terrifying things in the movie. And the show definitely keeps up that mentality. Mm -hmm. 
Imagine seeing that before you go to bed. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, go go back to the Avatar comparison. It's just like in in that they couldn't really get away with ki- killing people. They're like, okay, um, Jet's gonna be fine, kids. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> He's not. <laughs> Um, and also, just look at the sheer look of horror on that guy's face. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, uh, I, face. Again, my, uh, Sorry. I'd like to refer to my old meme of uh, Mimikyu versus Pikachu. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so basically, yeah, Rocky sent me this uh, meme. Was it you who did that or was it somebody yeah, else? Yeah, it was me who made it. Okay, so basically... If anybody's watched the first Dark Crystal, you'll know that the Gelfling puppets, while technically quite impressive, they do look very, very dated and awkward now. The yeah, they're puppetry... not super expressive. No, not super expressive. They move very awkwardly. The puppetry for the Gelflings in the TV show is a million times better. They're way more expressive. They move a lot more naturally, and they just look a lot more humanish. Mm-hmm. Mm. But not in like a creepy way, really. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, we just we just got a pledge. So Needhog just sent me uh, sixty five sec because he's from Sweden. Mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you very very much. Yeah, the puppetry yeah, thanks, is Needhog. glorious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the oh uh, Hutchinsonian. The originals are scrunkly. That's a <laughs> it's a very good uh, word for them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I suppose cute, that... but weird. <laughs> I suppose that's probably why the Skeksis are remembered better. I mean, still, the Skeksis are better uh, puppeted and, um, you know, same reasons as the Gelflings, but they were able to get more movement in them because they were bigger. Yes. Uh, so, so I think that definitely helped in, in terms of ha- how they're sort of the, the things that people remember the most of that film. Yeah, the, the Skeksis still looked really good, as did the Mystics, for that matter. Mm. They definitely were more expressive and they felt more real. And that translates to this one as well, because even though the Gelflings are a lot, lot better than they were in the movie, the Skeksis, I still think, steal the show in terms of their puppetry. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, the Gelfling here were also helped in that uh, apparently their heads are a lot bigger in this one. So I could, I can, well, I've seen uh, videos and pictures of some of the puppeteers, like uh, Becky mm-hmm. Henderson, the one who does the puppetry for Deet, one of the other main characters. I saw her actually using the Deet puppet, and yeah, mm-hmm. it does look like they're proportionately a lot bigger than the previous puppets used to be. Yeah, they're a lot bigger because one more maneuverability, and also they're able to uh, add more like animatronic things in the faces like you'll notice in this that the gelfling move their ears a lot more like they fold back when they're upset they do and also the way that they blink looks a lot more natural than it did in the original movie in the first one it looked like they were struggling to close their eyelids in this one it looks a lot better yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. except deet apparently uh apparently her eyes were so big they had to uh cgi on her blinking which makes, yeah, I can see that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so let's uh, do a couple of more of the uh, guess who does this voice. So where's the librarian? Hmm. The Gelfling librarian, not the, the Gelfling uh, librarian, yeah, not the scroll keeper. Yeah. Thank you. Well, actually, we can. Get, so both of these characters are voiced by what well, the well-known actors. So let's see if we can guess who voices them, or rather, the chat can. Mm-hmm. Did you uh, find Grisha's lexicon of lesser astrography? I shall return. <laughs> Thank you. Sir, can anybody in the chat guess who voices them? Mm-hmm. Sir, nothing. I think the ones who have already seen the show are giving people who haven't a chance to guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll give you a... Uh... Oh, we just... Yeah. <laughs> Hutchsonian, I'll be quiet now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I think it's wonderful how many sort of big names they managed to get for voices. It's pretty much, it's just big names, people who could do voices from the original, or big names who can do voices from the original. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think there's like only one, one or two people who, who like aren't big names. So like Augra, I think, isn't a big name. Yeah, no. she, I'm looking at the Wikipedia um, page on like my other internet window and uh yeah agra's voice actress in this is the only one who's blacked out so it doesn't have a page okay 
Well, yeah. Anyway, so um, you know the name of the uh, the female Gelfling, Rocky. So you say it. Yeah. So Brea here is voiced by Anya Taylor Joy. You may recognize her from literally anything big budget made in the past couple of years. <laughs> yeah. Significantly, yeah. the last thing that I really remember her for was playing Princess Peach in the most recent Mario movie. Yeah, and uh, spoilers for Dune, uh, she makes a surprise appearance in that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the librarian, so just get a nice shot of him so we can see. There we go. So he's voiced by Toby Jones, who, again, you'll probably know from a lot of things. He was the voice of Dobby in the Harry Potter series. He played... Um, Oh, what was his name from the MCU? Uh, Arnim Zola. He played Arnim Zola in the MCU. He's done a mm -hmm. lot of British TV shows and movies and theatre productions. Mm -hmm. He was in the Hunger Games, wasn't he? As one of the uh, commentators. He was, yes. I believe so, yeah. yeah. He was also in Doctor Who as the Dream Master, or the Dream mm -hmm. Lord, rather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been in a lot of stuff. And yeah, he's the voice of the librarian. Yep. Uh, I don't know if there's any more like majorly significant voice actors that would be mostly recognizable, but uh, uh, yeah, Game of Thrones fans might recognize Deet. Oh, okay. um, the um, the what, what's her name? The Queen. The, oh, the, the old queen. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Queen. Sorry, hang on. I'll see if I can get a bit with the Queen. Yeah, the old mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, you're uh. You've gone. Oh, are you going forward or backward? I'm forward. Okay, yeah. So I think I might have gone past the one I was looking for. It's the one where she's speaking with her daughter. Yeah. That's oh, now you're end. going. You're going backwards. I think. That's like really close to the end. I think. Yeah. Not really, really close, but quite close. I swear there like was. Uh, 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 okay. Oh, yeah. He's, he's got a famous voice actor. The captain. Who does? The captain. Oh, and, and the, the emperor, the Skeksy emperor. Yup. Oh, yeah. So hang on. Mm. There she is. Oh, no, sorry. That's Deet. Yeah, Good that's Deet. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking for Brea's mum. Mm -hmm. There we there go. There we go. So this one's a bit trickier because the actress who voices her is probably more recognizable from her more cartoony voices that she normally does. But she mm -hmm. does do this voice very similar in things like The King's Speech and The Crown. Mm -hmm. So let's mm -hmm. see if anyone in the chat can guess who it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, Nidag was saying that Mira's voiced by Alicia Vikander. And yeah. For very short role in this. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just put that up there. Uh, okay, no one so far has guessed it. That's Helena Bonham Carter. Mm -hmm. Do I admit I... her from anything ever made by uh, Tim by Burton? Tim Burton or yeah, her ex. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, I will admit I wouldn't have guessed that was her because. Like I said, I more well know her for sort of the more cartoony voices she does, mm. like Belletrix are strange in Harry Potter. And yeah, like you said, some of the voices she does for the Tim Burton movies, like The Queen in Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Or uh, uh, Mrs. 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 Lovett. Lo I was just about to say, yeah, Mrs. Lovett in Sweeney Todd. Mm -hmm. I don't think of her as being the age that she is, I think, which is, is why the, it, uh, it threw me that it was her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably because... Oh, yeah, she was no, also she was also Lady Tottington in uh, Wallace and Gromit: Curse of the Were Rabbit. Yes, yeah. <laughs> love that film. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's got a really star-studded cast. This show, and uh, it's also it's got some really high-profile puppeteers. So I mentioned Becky Henderson, who um, she's mostly known for this show, but she is on the rise in terms of other things that she's going to be doing in other shows soon, if you have a look at her Kofi or Patreon and such.
But there's one puppeteer who is in this, who if I see if I can try and find the character in which he plays, mm -hmm. just, uh, well, there he is. I'll see if I can get a bit of, better shot of him. Yeah. Let's go forward a little bit. Yeah. There he is. Mm -hmm. So that character, what's his name again? Gurgin. Gurgin. Mm -hmm. So he's puppeteered, not voiced, but puppeteered by Dave Chapman, who those who are on my show will be familiar with as the guy who did the puppetry and a lot of the voice work in Dick and Dom and the Bungalow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I mm. remember you saying in your uh, Dick and Dom video, and I was, I was really surprised that was him. Yeah, yeah. So Dick and Dom and CBC shows like uh, Arnold the Aardvark and such like that. That's where he got his start with puppeteering. And the Slammer. And mm. the Slammer, yes. Yeah. Where he actually got to appear physically in that a bit more. Mm. Mm. But yeah, so a couple of years ago, he got really big jobs from sort of high profile puppeteering jobs so he's he did this and he's also one of the puppeteers on the newer star wars projects like he's one of the puppeteers for bb8 mm -hmm. yeah oh and a uh, voice actor it's harris dickinson he's in a lot of a24 stuff and yeah he's also yeah. in the king he's also in the king's man yeah, so, so we got yeah, we got a we got a third person from that franchise in here. Yes, it's like I said, if we had Colin Firth, we'd have the whole party. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, what, what what's his name? Uh, Ray Fines. If Ray Fines was here too, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting. Dave Chapman does do some voices in this, but it doesn't list specifically who he does. It just says various voices. So he's probably mm -hmm. just one of the background, which is funny because they even say who he plays voice-wise in Star Wars, which was this tiny background character in the casino scene in Last Jedi that if you blinked, you would have missed him. But they do list that that's his voice in the actual movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But either way, it's really good to see him relatively speaking anyway, in this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this character has a bigger part to play later on, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's also responsible for some of the funniest bloopers for the series, which I'm sure will show at some point during the stream. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that video. Mm. His eyes are made of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, with the... So on, on that note... Uh, unless you guys have got anything else you want to say about the show before we move on to the riffs. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I nope. think... Uh, okay, so now I've just got to remember some of the jokes that I made. Oh, actually, no, I did remember one thing I wanted to mention, so... Oh, yes, yeah. So I mentioned in the uh, the original Dark Crystal review that a lot of what happened in that movie seems to have been an influence for some of the things in the future Bethesda games. So, like... There was a lot of stuff in there that felt very familiar of Skyrim, like how Augra's um, orrery looked a lot like some of the things you find in the Dwemer ruins in Skyrim. And the crab creatures that the Skeksis use look a lot like the Myrlurks from Fallout 4. Mm -hmm. I saw some stuff similar like this in here. So these symbols that are used to represent the Gelfling clans look a lot like the Daedra script in Skyrim. They do kind of. Especially like this one. This one especially looks like the symbol for oblivion. Yeah. I, I wonder if it's like a, a case of recursive influence. Could be, know? yeah. And also, yeah. I, I don't know if we could play it uh, because it's a very quiet bit and they might not be able to hear it. But there's a bit near uh, where the queen is talking to her daughter where there's a humming in the background that sounds a lot like the humming that the Nern root makes in Skyrim. Yeah, see if you can uh, if you can see it, and we'll just be really quiet. Well, I don't think we'll anyone will be able to hear it anyway because they're talking over it. Yeah, true. But yeah, so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let us make some jokes. Mm -hmm. So just see if I can find some bits where I remember us saying th funny things. I remember yeah. at, at the um, when I first watched this, being slightly disappointed that. Um, they were using the original score, but I do really like the score in this. Yeah, I, I, I listen they use to the, the original. They use the leap motif when they mm. show the title card. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. But I I do I do love that they have their own soundtrack. But I, I do also love the original soundtrack. I used to listen to the um, the original one all the time. Mm -hmm. But um, so yeah, but yeah, both both are good. 
Yeah. All right. Um, trivia, the uh, score for this is done by the same guy who does the score for uh, the um, Spider-Verse movies. I did not yeah. know that. That's really yeah. cool. <laughs> but yeah, let's make some jokes. Spreads through Thrawn and into its creatures. Even the ones locked in the Skeksis cages. <laughs> Which they will no doubt eat later on. Mm-hmm. Yep. These the lab animals or the pantry. You decide. <laughs> How I will look in about 50 years' time. Yeah. <laughs> I need wheels. I mean, I mean, he already looks a lot like my granddad. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Podling mid sneeze. Yep. He's <laughs> <laughs> got quite a nose for a podling. He does, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gelfling mid sneeze. Yep. <laughs> Hang on, we got we had a good joke for this bit. Hang on, just go skip. Every all of still it. of Neat Rhea looks like the knife cat meme. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rian has a very expressive face. You certainly did try. I was distracted. All I could think about was kissing you. And I got sick of waiting. So I kissed you. We can't show that because it wouldn't look convincing enough with puppets doing it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's enough kissing later on. Yeah, we do see kissing later on, but I like how they cut away. It's almost sort of like, yeah, we couldn't do that. Oh, you you had a good bit for this one. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what? Must have snuck in. Uh, an Arathan soldier wouldn't risk entering the castle. Quick, we gotta go find a big newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Roll it up and hit the giant spider with it. Yeah. <laughs> Either that or try to trick it into an enormous bath. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that mountain air plays havoc with my pustule. Well, I have read of a rotten poultice. So that Skeksis with the pustules, that's basically how I look and sound when I've got really bad hay fever. Yep. Yeah. And it's also Aquafina continuing her trend of voicing obnoxious bird characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, it's, it, on a serious note, I do love the design of the Skeksis castle. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it's almost kind of like Castle Greyskull from He-Man, but on crack. Yeah, it, it almost looks like, uh, it looks like the Skeksis architectures, architects must have just mm. put their own photo into an AI generator. It does, yeah. <laughs> you remember a couple years ago, like AI would produce like the most cursed looking images? They would, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it reminds me of. Oh yeah, so the the creatures in the library here, once we see them, not her. Actually, I think I gotta go back. No, no. Yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. It'll be appearing. Yep. So, what did you call these things? They're called. Well, I call them book monkeys. But <laughs> yeah. Their official name is Pluffums. Which is a really cute name, but I like book monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a part that I forgot uh, that we got to go back to see. Mm. So. Um, it's so a really creative thing uh, with the carriage in this uh, universe. So the way the carriage works is that the wheels are actually basically, yeah, these things, which are basically giant 
wood lice or roly polies as you called them. Mm -hmm. But I just love not only the way they move, but the noise they make, which is basically just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'll show you right. It reminds me of like guinea pigs. They make little squeaks as they run along. Yeah. But yeah, as you can see, they get into the wheel wells of the carriages and they roll up and they roll along as wheels, which is a really clever idea. So I'll see if I can get a bit where uh, we actually see it rolling along. Yeah. Um, in the uh, the city where the Gelfling are watching the carriage. Yeah. The... yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, so those wheels are the giant uh, wood lice creatures. Mm -hmm. And when they come to a break, you'll actually see it a bit more clearly. Here it goes. So. See a hard break and they uncurl themselves. <laughs> I like that the one sneezed from all the dust that uh, <laughs> yeah that their hard break kicked up. <laughs> Which I, it does make me wonder. Like I wonder if replacing tires in this world is like the equivalent of putting down a dog. Oh no! And also this character, who I wanted to mention, which uh, I pointed it out, and I'm surprised you didn't pick it, who looks a lot like the person who runs the Hunger Games in the Hunger Games movies. Yeah, uh, Effie Trinket, I believe. Yeah, Effie, Effie Trinket. It's those, pink, it's those uh, blonde curl hairs and the big dress. She does look a lot like her. Yeah. <laughs> also, this character, uh, if you look, seems to have fake wings on her dress. She does, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so maybe uh maybe this is like the equivalent of stuffing your bra for a gelfling. <laughs> tiny could, little wings. So it could be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also that gelfling on or actually both these gelflings. So this one looks kind of like um uh a little bit like uh Claudia Winkleman but with red hair. Mm. -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And this one looks like a gelfling that's had a really, really bad facelift. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> just like... Just... Okay, so uh, that one in particular, they're... So I think for a lot of these background gelfling, they reused, um, like, the, the rubber molds that they mm. uh, cast the faces in. Because later would on... makes sense, yeah. Yeah, because later on, there's a character who has that exact same face shape, but mm. the way he... Uh, the way he looks, it looks a lot more natural. Which yeah. I, won't, I don't blame them for reusing assets. It's a classic thing to do. Mm. But that did just remind me of something that you told me about, Rocky, when we were reviewing the very first Dark Crystal movie, mm. which is how the Gelfling, or at the very least, um, what was the name of the male Gelfling again? Jen. Jen. How his puppet, the full body one, was 100% anatomically correct. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> And it does make me wonder if they did the same for these puppets. Oh man, <laughs> uh, I don't know if the if they did, they have a, they've wisely not shown any behind the scenes. Yeah, but ju just to kind of uh, cut through what we're saying here, yes, the Gelflings in the first movies had penises underneath the clothes. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Yes. Did you not know that? No. Yeah. Uh -huh. No. There's actually pictures of it. Jen had a penis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my childhood ruined. <laughs> I know. Uh, if you want it to be even more ruined, uh, he must be a grower, not a shower. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> but, yeah, it was weirdly something that Jim Henson insisted on, which I'm not sure if that's kind of cool or just really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, yeah, it's a little factoid for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hutchsonian crying. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and sorry, Zion praise. Everybody. I did, and I did not need to know that. Well, now you do. <laughs> <laughs> do you, um, 
uh, this is random, but I was, I was thinking when I was watching it earlier, it's like, oh, yeah, that's how you expand on a fantasy world. You add folk singing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we live in Grot and we pick up moss. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, when Deed is introduced. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because uh, in in this part she explains that. Uh, hang on. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. She explains in this part that the mark on her cheek is from ink because she was just writing. But it looks more like she got in a massive argument with the librarian and he hit her in the face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's for asking, asking questions. For those books. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, the librarians are No, I do not sound like Dobby. <laughs> <laughs> Quit offering me socks, you little brat. <laughs> I've already got enough things to wank into. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that everyone makes that joke about Dobby, that that's what he used the sock for. Jeez. There's a, there's a girl on um, who makes comedy videos and YouTube shorts, and she does like um like a sleazy Dobby character. It's very funny. Yeah. <laughs> Mister Harry should have never given me a sock. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember where we are at the moment. Oh yeah, we're at this bit where the scientist is trying to figure out how to use the dark crystal to regain his youth. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love his Cheeto hands, by the way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Angles. Why are they like that? I guess they're supposed to be like fuzzy gloves. Yeah. Yeah, there they are. They do look like especially they especially look like those extra spicy Cheetos. Yeah. But instead of the fingers, he just like used his whole hand. To grab fistfuls. Uh, so Joe just said, there's a plot, George, a plot to make awesome dark crystals happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> need hog. Brea, I fell down some stairs. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Poor Brea. <laughs> Zion Craze, I'm assuming this is from the librarian. No, I do not look like a Game of Thrones character. Hmm. <laughs> Have Actually, what you're saying with the Cheeto hands, with the stuff that's coming off his fingers, it makes it look like the powdered cheese is coming off. Yep. Crystal is hungry. <laughs> and it wants the worst kind of quick snack it can get. <laughs> I don't like Cheetos. I'm, I'm sorry, I just don't. Mm. <laughs> just stuffing his face all day with Cheetos in the lab. Yep. <laughs> No wonder they haven't discovered they could do this to the crystal yet. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why the crystal started sucking out life instead of giving it. It was sick of being covered in Cheeto grease. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Oh, hang on. There was a, a bit that I got like on a screenshot just for a second. Hang on. Mm. Nah, I can't find it again. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. always tricky. Oh, this bit. Yeah. The great so, Deku tree. That's ex yeah, that's exactly yeah. It's it's a talking tree. It's basically the great Deku tree from Zelda. Yeah. Mm. But Deep's dad's reaction to the talking tree. Oh, we'll get to that. That was classic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so here we go. Yeah, the great Deku tree is talking to Deet. Mm -hmm. There was a bit during um, her flashback that, uh, no, well, not flashback, vision that I thought was mm -hmm. funny. So I'll just get to that part. Wake me up inside! <laughs> <laughs> Live deep reaction. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Was it good for you? <laughs> uh. mm. 
uh, oh, this part. You had a good joke about this bit here. Mm. <laughs> was it a bit further along or further back? I can't remember. It was a little further along. Here, here we go. I think we got Yeah, it. when they were looking down the hole. Down there. Let's see. You know, we didn't all three need to do that. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. It's like, well, now what are we going to do? <laughs> yeah. Well, she can go down there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, this part uh, yeah. where he, he finds the scientist. I like this bit. Yeah. The oh, noise. yeah. You, the, the, the noise his staff makes sounds like a machine gun being cocked. Yeah. Yeah. This would be a much shorter series if that actually was a machine gun. <laughs> it would be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, the part I think you're trying to react to is a bit before this. No, where, it... where the scientist finds her. Oh, oh, that's right, yes. Yeah. There we go. That, that's little... the one. Yeah. That definitely sounds like something the Joker would say. Yeah, yeah. that's just straight up the Joker. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Say what you say. Say what you want about the Gelflings. They all have really great cheekbones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They don't need a buckle fat removal, do they? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't the, have any buckle fat to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the I like how the book is triangular shaped, and the way it opens up like that reminds me of the remord, Marauders map from Harry Potter. Yeah. Yes, yeah, genius design. It is, yeah. By the way, have either of you guys ever been to Glastonbury? Not the festival, but the town. No. Yeah. Oh my god, you guys have to go. It's literally just loads of shops with this kind of fantasy aesthetic Ooh, just that's... like all of the shops there it's amazing <laughs> the triforce yeah it, it is a bit like the triforce actually yeah mm -hmm. but that sounds lovely yeah yeah i definitely recommend it oh you had a good joke for this bit yeah <laughs> yeah she just she just leaves <laughs> <laughs> The crazy stuff, magic stuff still happening in there, but that's enough. It looks like Cyberdog in Camden there. Mm. Oh, I've been to Cyberdog, actually, yeah. Yeah, I went for the first time the other day. I can't I, imagine. I remember, I remember going first, past it for the first time and going, like, is there there's a nightclub that's on now? I was like, no, no, that's a shop. That's a shop I don't know how you, you yeah. I don't know how you could work in there. It must be a massive headache when you have to listen to that music all day. Maybe everyone yeah. who works there is deaf and they're just good at reading lips. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, here we go. What talking? It's like a sickness. Oh, I know it, Travis. Yeah, yeah, I know. Told me I had to stop a little before this. Yeah. Yeah. The sanctuary tree's a tree. Trees can't talk. <laughs> of all the things that happen in your world, that's the thing you draw the line at. Uh huh. It's like you use giant roly poly bugs to use as wheels, and you're lorded over by a bunch of scabby vultures, but trees can't talk. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's just silly. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I just love the way that that's where they draw the lines. Like, oh, that can't happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, like everything that all those things just happen to just take place in their world. Like a mobile phone there would, be, would make no sense, would it? No. Is it that glass is true. that talks? <laughs> Also, Deet has two dads, doesn't she? Yes, she does. does. She? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's it's something really nice about the world building in this show is that it doesn't stick to what we have in our world. Like it has a sort of um, like a, a matriarchal monarchy and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Here, my emperor, for you. Drink. You must drink. <laughs> Not done with any class, he just sticks his beak right in. Yeah, it's hard to take delicate sips when you don't have lips. Yeah. Although it does make me wonder how they say O oh noises. Mm. Maybe they're like maybe they're like parrots. They don't actually like talk the way we do. Yeah. <laughs> Which to be fair makes sense considering in the original movie they weren't supposed to talk at all. Yeah. Well, they well, they were, but in their own language, which is why um, it, which is why the Chamberlain talks like that. Because I I believe I'm right in thinking that originally he was just supposed to talk like that to the Gelflings. Because he speaks in broken English, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. So the so idea. He, so the idea like was this, yeah. It's this weird sort of um, uh, thing where he he's the only character that speaks in broken English. Yeah. <laughs> Although to be fair, it's like some of the Skeksis, they do seem like they speak in slightly like uh, when the new emperor goes by the law, he must pay. Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, and Zion Craze, yes, that is the guy who gets dusted in the film. That's the emperor mm-hmm. who dies near the beginning of the first movie. Mm-hmm. By the way, Zion Craze, I, I can't remember if I said, but you s- said earlier that you you didn't like the film. Do you, do you check out the series if you don't don't like the film? Yeah, it's, the film the series might be better if you didn't like the film. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you like don't like fantasy or something, then obviously the f- series probably won't be for you. But yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely, I, it definitely felt like it, it um, sort of the the fl- it doesn't have the same flaws that the film has certainly. Mm. So. This last bit, the uh, ending uh, monologue by the Chamberlain, is probably one of my favorite parts of the show. It is really uh, good, but yeah. I probably wouldn't be able to show it because it goes on for so long. It might get yeah. copyright struck. But mm-hmm. last thing I'll say was with this tile that they see, someone got a spirograph for Christmas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, it, no, I, I really love just to kind of continue on the monologue bit. Um, one thing I noticed mm-hmm. on it, and someone pointed out to me um, on the server, is that. Um, Normally, the Chamberlain talks in this really simpering, high-pitched voice when he's speaking to Gelfling or uh, trying to get something out of someone. Yeah. But in this scene, he speaks in, like, a lot more, like, a deeper, more serious voice with less grammatical errors. He does, yes. Mm. Yeah, so I just think that's really, that's really interesting characterization. I think so too, yeah. Yeah, he is dead serious here. But I think uh, we've just just about crossed an hour, so I think uh, we'll call it there, unless you guys have anything else to say before we wrap up? Um, no, not really. Apart from I'm, I'm really looking forward to revisiting this. I watched this in 2020, 2021, something like that. So it's been okay. a few years. Um, I haven't seen it again since, but... Yeah, I'm. I'm really excited to um, go back into this. Not excited about feeling angry about the fact it was cancelled again. It was cancelled <laughs> yeah. the day after it won an Emmy, and I'm not over that. <laughs> mm. Oh man, the day after. Yeah, that is going to be definitely the the worst part for me. Is when I'm sure when we get to the end, I'm going to be so invested, and then there's nothing left to watch. Yeah, mm. I, I think the the it's sad that it's been like five years and the story hasn't been continued in any way i mean obviously the chances of another it was it was cancelled from the sounds of it because that because it was too expensive because i think the person at netflix who commissioned it got fired like qu- quite quickly afterwards because mm-hmm. it would it would have had to have been like the next tent pole series like the next stranger things for for it to be worth Netflix's while, money wise. Yeah. I'm, seeing, I'm seeing on uh, I'm seeing on Wikipedia that the budget was apparently ninety seven point seven million dollars. Which yeah. yeah, that was that definitely would have made Netflix stand up and take attention. It's like we can't mm. afford to keep doing this. Yeah, yeah. and um, I, so yeah, I I think the chances of another 
um, streaming service or channel picking it up again are pretty much non-existent. Um, Which especially is a shame. In the However, because, and, and um, they originally pitched this as an animated show because they um, they didn't think it would they anyone would commission a, a live a, you know live action puppet one. But the uh, person working at Netflix who got fired was really wanted to, um, uh, to use puppets. But um, I think that. I think it. I think it. It would work if it continued. I'd. I'd love to see it continue in some form, in like in comics or something, just so yeah. that we get, we get a conclusion to the story. Yeah, that that's what I heard uh, somewhere that um, Lisa Henson apparently. I can't remember. Like, don't quote me on this, but I read an article with an interview where she said, um, and this took place in about twenty twenty or so. Mm. She estimated it would be about five years until they were ready to um, to like announce what their next steps were for the Dark Crystal IP. Well, that'll be next year. So yeah, I so I assume we'll hear something within the next couple of years if it's like a book or a comic or something. Could yeah. be, yeah. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. But yeah, fingers crossed. But either way, we've still got a long way to go. We've only got one episode down of 10. So join us for the next nine weeks where we'll be going through all the episodes and I'll be slowly discovering why you two love this show so much. Although even through the first episode, I am really getting into it. Mm -hmm. oh, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, is that what from, you're laughing from what Hutchinson said? Yeah. <laughs> Please share the Ryan joke, I'm begging. Yeah, Ryan the gel fling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so join us for the next nine weeks. We'll be here and I'll be bringing in some more people. And if you yourself enjoy the Dark Crystal and maybe want to join in as well, then please let me know. We'll see if we can fit you in. And we'll also be doing an interview with someone who was on the show will reveal who it is later down the line. But yeah, mm -hmm. if you have any questions you want us to ask them, then please let us know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so hope you enjoyed the first stream and we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you for Bye. having me. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs>